Hi everybody, this is Ginger Cook in Houston, Texas. It's been a beautiful day. I've had a lot of fun uh, getting ready. Our fr friend, our moderator, John Little, is in Michigan. He's on too. He will um, direct the questions to me via my nifty telephone and cord and the earphones are plugged in. It's about a minute. So those of you who are kind of new to how this works, we're going to be doing a painting today and guess what? We're leaving it up. Okay, we're leaving it up on YouTube. We're not, usually we don't leave the Tuesday ones up, but we are. And because there's some time constraints in this, um, we're going to get right to it. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to show you is what is the painting we're going to be doing. We are going to be painting Lady in Red, and we're doing it 6 by 8 So, And you could, of course, later make this bigger, but this will get you an idea of how you paint it. That's the idea behind doing small things. So if we look at this... And we were to take a pen. Let's just talk about the colors we're going to want, okay? So what we, what for sure we know we're going to want white, okay? So we're just going to write that on the on our plate here. If we were using a, a bigger canvas, we wouldn't fool around with these dumb plates. We would do, you know, wax paper um, uh, tablets and stuff. But this is great for what we got going here. All right, so we've got some greens and stuff. So we want a phthalo blue. P H T H A L O, thalo blue. Okay, that's your turquoisey blue. Now, and you want it the green shade if you're buying Liquitex. And then I don't think we need any ultramarine in this, but we are going to want a purple. Dodge need purple. And then, of course, we're going to want cad yellow medium and yellow oxide. And then we're going to want yellow oxide. Yellow oxide, yellow ochre, like the same, you know, color. Okay, and let's see, cad red medium. Cad red medium, and that's going to be, and then naphtha crimson. That's your bright red. I don't know what your brand calls it, but it's just your, it's your primary red on the color wheel. Okay, that's the red. And cad red medium is like an orange red, okay? So in case you were wondering what the difference is between the two, and we probably want burnt umber. Now, this is, a, I have t entitled this Lady in Red. We're going to talk about the mystery of this painting. Later on, we're going to have a mystery. In fact, I'm going to do a contest. Ha ha. To see if someone can find, we'll, we'll talk about this. There'll be a contest involved in this. We're going to see if we got some detectives out there. Okay. So, um, contest. So in the meantime, so that while we're talking about this, speaking of contests, uh, I held a contest just by myself here. Just I didn't tell you all about it, but it, you know, on a few. Sometimes some of you have friended me on Facebook and send me your artwork, and I look at it and go ooh, and I like to see what you've done, and I can kind of watch over. I watch you guys, and over the months, everybody has gotten so good, really good in painting. It's just so impressive. And two of our uh, artists that uh, have been on, you know, one of my friends on Facebook that follows along on our live lessons is uh, one is Victoria Snyder and the other is Nicole Faulkner. And both of those guys went ahead and they took the lesson that they learned from me and then they went ahead and tried to incorporate that in a personal painting. In other words, all right, Ginger showed me how to do this. What if I did something else? What would happen if I did this? I'm going to show you that in a minute. For those of you who missed our live class last night, um, both these guys won a uh, free download on our website. And I'm going to show you that in a minute, too, putting out the orange colors. Isn't this looking pretty? Let's zoom in. Ooh, cool, right? Ooh, don't you love when you put out colors all new? It's like clean clothes almost before you mess it all up. <laughs> it's like having clean clothes. Okay, so here's our um, naphtha red, you know, crimson. You see that's a, you know, a deep red. And then we've got the last one is our brown, which is our burnt umber. Now we're doing this small. And some of you may want to paint along with me, but since you know that you're not in a panic, I'm going to leave this up. You may just want to follow along and watch it first and uh, chat with your friends while we're doing this. That's perfectly all right, too. One of the funs of having live lessons is our community. Okay, so I started to tell you about uh, our guys. Now, uh, the other uh, one, a couple Tuesdays ago, we did, uh, I showed you guys on a live lesson how to do this, you know, how to paint people from behind. Kids from behind are really fun. And we also, and I think this was a Wednesday afternoon live lesson, I showed you how to do a peacock. 
So these guys, Nicole, let me just move this out of the way so I don't get paint in it. Nicole painted this peacock from that. Isn't let's zoom out because you can't can't tell now. You're seeing yeah yeah yeah. Look at that. Isn't that just cool? So she took this idea and made that and I think that's just stunning. So anyway, so what she won was one of our of fifty one of fifteen downloads we have on gingercooklive.gallery, which is absolutely, you know, and that's where you go to our website. And she selected the Van Gogh, um, uh, let's see, what, which one, what we, yeah, but what do we call that? Let me just put my glasses on so I can read it. What, that, I mean, I, I'm not saying what we called it. What did he call it? It was a, uh, blue, blue, by the way, blue, blue flowers. Blue vase with corn flowers and poppies. Can I zoom in on that? That's what that's what she picked for her free download. And so then we were able to send her a code, and now she owns this video. So those of you, sometimes, you know, you may not, um, you know, have the time to get caught, you know, do the weekly lessons, but you can always go to our website, and there's individual ones you can buy. They, they're, you know, they're, you know, run from 4 or $5 to ten they They're not real expensive. And yet you can own them and keep them forever, which is, I think, kind of nice in your own personal library if you like to collect things. She ordered that. Victoria has not picked out something. Now let me show you what Victoria did. Remember I said that we had this, um, this we did this little boy so from behind, okay? So she painted this. Is, let me zoom back out again so you can see it. She did this. Is that cool? So both of these guys, they got the sort of the Imagination Award from Ginger for taking something that you learned and then expanding on it because that's the whole idea behind these art lessons. I never try to teach you to paint like me. I try to teach you to paint like you. And but you have to do enough paintings before you figure out what that you is. How's that? Okay, so we're going to put these out of the way. Let's get rid of the ginger sign. Now, here's the mystery. You ready for this coming up? Somebody says, "Where do you where did you get this painting? Is this is beautiful? It is." Okay? I take no credit for it. This is done by what I refer to as one of the old dead artists, a Renoir, Monet, Matisse, uh, Impressionist, some, one of the old dead ones. But I can't remember who it was, and I was looking for the source. I printed out this picture months ago, and I can't remember where I found it. So here's the contest. Uh, the first one to find the original, you know, find tell us who the, uh, the, the artist was on this, and we can verify it, will win uh, a chance to, for a free, not, a free download from one of our... Um, uh, stuff now, uh, you know. The, since we're going to be leaving this video up on YouTube, chances are, um, by the you know, if this is up for several months, the contest will be over. But when you when you tell us, then I will post it right here in the notes. When I come back in the notes for uh, YouTube, I'll post it. All right. So now, let's get out a canvas. I'm using a um, a six by eight canvas. This is Centurions. We talked about that last night. Uh, sometimes you usually see me doing the Paramount. These are both uh, made by Jerry Anorama, and they're real canvas. The, the, the linen canvas is a little smoother, which is nice if you're doing people or portraits, but either one would have worked. So I'm going to tear one of these out and put this out of the way. And we're going to start with our base underpainting color. Now you look at this, and you, we really need some sort of uh, uh, brown uh, underpainting on here, okay? So what I think I want to do is I'm going to use this as a measurement. I, with the except, we're going to do a little bit of an exception on the brown. We're going to come up, and I know that sounds kind of funny, but we're going to do a quick measure. I want to come up about um, two inches here on the right, and I'm going to put a little dot right here, two inches, a little bit of piece of chalk, and I want to come over about uh, two and a half inches, I think. Two and a half inches. And I'm just going to do a little square like this. Just a little square like that. I'm going to make that yellow. In fact, I might bring that over a little bit. Maybe even a little bit more. I'm going to make that yellow. And everything else is going to be burnt umber. That's going to be our underpainting color. So, okay. So, let's take a sheet of... Uh, okay, let me find a piece of, you know, just kind of bright colored paper, which is always cool. Let's see if I can find one down here. And I'll put this under here like this. Now let's grab our burnt umber and a fairly good sized brush. Don't want to get too crazy. This is a ruby satin silver and this is a number eight. Okay, and I'm going to just take burnt umber like this 
and I think I'm taking a little bit of cad red medium and burnt umber and I'm just going to paint this whole canvas this color and we'll dry it so a tiny bit of you know burnt um, you know that's purple let's see let's try burnt umber and a little bit of cad cad red medium and so we've got this sort of breast brown color this is a uh, cad red medium burnt umber we're going to just go ahead and paint this in here kind of down across and sort of smudge this on don't want it too thick and as I come around here like this, I'm going to save this bottom part yellow. And I have bad reasons for that. Okay, so here we go. So here's our here's our dark underpainting. Underpainting, you need something on there for the rest of the picture to bind to with acrylics. You always do something like this. Some I had somebody write and say, you know, that's not an underpainting, it's something else. And you know what? This it is to me because because uh, it changes depending on what you're putting in. It's not just a matter of toning the canvas. We're actually putting some paint on here. The other paint's going to bind to it. It's going to be very happy. I'm not going to clean my brush. I'm just going to come up here with some yellow, cad yellow medium, and just come on in here like this. Put the yellow. doesn't have to be too great. And I'll just kind of blend out the edges like this. There, something like that. Okay, so I'm going to say there's my, my yellow. And then it's not real thick, but I'm going to dry it because then we're going to we're going to draw on here. Now we're we're very considerate. We understand that nobody wants to listen to the hair dryer, and I want you to take a minute and really dry this. And so what we're going to do is we're going to mute the sound while we dry it. How's that? So on the count of three, you ready for this? One, two, three. I'm going to ready to go back on. So this is dry, right? When I'm letting you catch up, because I'm I'm nice that way. I'm letting you catch up. And you know why are we doing this person in the first place? What was the reason? Well, on what we try to do on GingerCookLive.gallery, our big thing, okay, and um, is that we have a major for our our subscribing members. Every week we release a what I call a featured release like you know an a movie when we release that and for instance uh, if you go to our website those of you who don't think about us uh, we, we our members subscribe for twenty five dollars a month well nineteen ninety five if you're over sixty and uh, they get over sixty videos and I add three a week and on Thursday we release what we call a major release now this week last week which last Thursday we released this one of, of a pop store which is an old-timey gas station kind of painted in the way that Hopper might have painted something and uh, to, tomorrow, well, no, tomorrow's Wednesday. So Thursday, we're going to be doing pansy, pansy bath, this pansy basket, and a uh, basket of pansies. And so sort of flowers, I felt, was the theme for this week. So in that case, this, is, this was the genesis of this, all right, was there was uh, some flowers. And I like this lady. And we did some people last week. And again, she's really not facing us. You don't see eyes or you see very little of her face. This is actually fairly simple to draw in, so I thought you might um, you might like this. And of course, uh, this will later be on our website, probably in about t two weeks. And here's the deal: John and I are 
uh, are, are taking next week off on vacation. Uh, John's r driving down to Michigan, and we're going to be going to two days worth of YouTube stuff. And so uh, we will we will uh, continue uh, next week with the major releases. The week the following week we're going to be doing this dog, and I'm going to teach you how to paint you know how how to paint dog portraits. Um, some of you may watch my daughter Cinnamon. She touched a little bit on this, but I tell you, I had this scheduled weeks in advance, so I, I claim claim the idea. But it's okay because there's lots of different ways to pet, paint pets, and there's no black in this animal. But I'm going to show you how to paint this dog, and then after that, the week after that, this is your June. This is your June lineup. We're going to be doing a Santorini. How cool is that? We're going to be painting that. And then everybody's been waiting for this one because this isn't really in the style of Thomas Kincaid. Um, th this uh, canal, Village on the Canal, okay? Which is, let me move the Santorini, Village on the Canal, which will be, those will be our major, you know, releases of this month. And this will be on the 30th of June. So those are good reasons to uh, be, you know, be members. Um, I hope this is, uh, hope you're all dry now. Now we're going to be using, I told you I'd tell you a little bit about, somebody asked me, yesterday what chalk is she using and you know this is hysterical because I put out a little piece of <laughs> oh here it is okay this is one of my favorite ones is this this general's charcoal white pencil I could get them on Amazon got them on Amazon this is the this is called general's and it comes with a little sharpener but this will go into a regular electric one too so general white pencils now the other one that I've used in the past this is by Conti it's a white pastel the problem is I can never figure out how to sharpen this and this takes a knife I don't have a sharpener big enough for this one and really as much I make up as I've used over the years in pencils you'd think one of those dumb sharpeners that came with those things would work with this and I couldn't find one so there you go so however th these sharpen very easily so what we're going to do is we're going to take a ruler now and we're going to sketch this in so what I want to do first, and where this is really fun, that you're going to love this, we're going to come over here. Um, let's just make this four inches, like this. Nothing too crazy. I'm going to put a mark right here, um, right here in the white pencil. Should I zoom in a little bit? You can see what I'm doing. We'll just we'll do this step by step. This is not going to be hard. You cannot believe what I teach people on on on. I teach on the, uh, these painting parties down in Houston from Reloda Masterpiece. And the stuff I get people to do who have never picked up a paintbrush in their life, I promise you, you guys are all artists. You're going to have no problem with this. All right, so then I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to come up um, an inch on this side, put a mark right here. Then I want to come in about an inch and a half from there and put a little mark. And maybe I'll just do a little curved line like that. That's the bottom of the sleeve. Okay, and now I want to come up from that sleeve and tell you what, this is going to be so easy. Uh, f four inches from the sleeve, not from the bottom of the canvas, from the sleeve, please, four inches. Okay, now um, I'm going to come down from the top of the canvas. I'm going to come down two and a half inches, and I'm going to be in about quarter of an inch. I'm going to come in about a quarter of an inch up here and come down two and a half inches from the top of the canvas. Two and a half. That's right here. Okay. Is that right? Can't be right. Is that right? It is right. And then I'm going to do a little line like that. Okay. A little curved line like that. You guys can do that. Okay. And then I'm going to come up from there quarter of an inch and say that's the top of the collar like that. Her collar. Now, how far, how wide is this sleeve? This sleeve is about an inch and a quarter wide, like this, coming down, about an inch and a quarter. And it gets a little bit wider as it comes down here. It just kind of flares out a little bit. So a little bit right here, and I'm going to bring it all the way up here and make a line like this. This is the top of her, of her collar, and we're going to bring it down a little bit further, which is just about like this. We're going to say this is her collar, which is sort of going to be into a flower right about here. Some sort of little flower. Okay. Now, from here, from her collar, we're going to go about three quarters of an inch and put a little dot. That's where her neck's starting. And let's see, we're going to just make a little line like that. And then how wide is her neck? Her neck is like three quarters of an inch wide. 
So we're going to put a little dot like that. Somebody said, can you use watercolor pencils? Um, yeah, sure. You absolutely can. Watercolor pencils work just fine. Okay. So we're going to come up about a quarter of an inch on her neck like that, but it's going to curve a little bit. Her neck's curving just a little bit, quarter of an inch. There you go. Okay. Now, the, from, the top of, from the top of her head, Let's just see if I can come out this way. Okay, I'm going to just give you some measurements. I'm going to put a dot here. I'm going to come down about an inch and a half from here on the top. An inch and a half right here. I'm going to put a dot. And then I'm going to come out from that dot. I'm going to come out two inches straight out from that dot. Two inches. Okay, that's as wide as her face is. All right, so that's that's where her face is. Now it's interesting here's her neck and her neck is curving like this and we've got a triangle like this for her face. I just want you to see that. There's a, like this little triangle for her face and then her neck's coming here and then what we're doing is we're giving her a little hair like this sketching this around like this on her head. Now when we come out and draw her face in You've got her jaw like this. And let's see, I don't think I have this neck long enough. Let me see, what is the height from here to here? It's an inch. Okay, one of the wonderful things about chalk is it erases. You can just smudge it out. So we're next next plan. Okay, inch and three quarter to the jawline. No, in, uh, three quarters of an inch to the jawline right here. Three quarters of an inch to the jawline. Okay, so her jawline this is her jawline right here, okay? And then she's got this little little triangle that comes back like this. And then her, there's her neck, okay? So, okay, that's it. Now we're going to come down here with her nose. You just see a little bit of a nose. And you don't see the face. That's why I did this. You really don't see the face. And then this, her hair's coming like this. Her, she's got an ear here like this. Here's the back of her head. She's got some sort of fancy bun. And she's got some sort of rolled bangs, I guess. I don't know. All right, but you really don't. You just don't see. You just don't see much. This is actually an easier face than Lady in the Garden. Okay. And I'm gonna just sort of expand on her, um, her coat. Okay. Now she's kind of looking away. Now let's come up. Let's see. Let's come up um, two inches from this bottom. Two inches from the bottom. Put a bar dot. Okay. And then I'm gonna do that over here too. Put a little dot, and then I want to come this way, an inch and uh, two and three quarters inches, two and three quarters inches from that dot. Put a little dot, okay, and um, that's good. A little dot there. Now here's her dress. It's coming like here's her dress. It's coming like this, okay, kind of curves like that, and it's going to kind of tuck in here. It's going to tuck back up here. Because basically her dress is doing this, okay? But we don't see that because of the um, uh, the flowers are in the way, all right? But there's her dress. Now, her obi thing, this is some sort of kimono nifty thing. We're going to come straight up. Let's see. Let's come up straight up. How far? Oh, two and, two and three quarters inches again from the bottom. Two and three quarters inches from the bottom. I'll make a bigger mark this time so I remember what it is. Then I want to come up an inch and a quarter, which is really just right out to the, her her sleeve here. And I'm going to say that I'm just going to go ahead and make her um, her her yellow sash. That's where her yellow sash is. And then next to that, there's some sort of little I don't know more yellow sash that's doing that. Okay. And then I've got some sort of big flower here like that. Just going to say, and then this is a half a flower here. Okay. Good. So we got flower, flower. Okay. Everybody's with me on that. Okay. Flower, flower. So, so far, so good. Now let's throw in the pot. That's easy. So, um, left hand side, two inches, left hand side, two inches, put a mark. I swear you can draw anything. Just if you have a ruler, you can draw anything because you just figure out where it goes. And then we're going to go in there about an inch, straight in about an inch, left hand side about an inch, and put a dot. Now, this is where the pot starts, and I'm going to change um, charcoal because I can't see it. So here's where my pot starts, and I know, what do I know? It's coming 
it's not quite straight, but it's almost straight. It just comes around here like that to her. I think I'll do a darker piece of charcoal chalk so you can see it. Here. There it is. It's coming around here like that to her, okay? Now, how high up does it go? Well, it goes up about an inch here like that. It goes up about an inch, but it comes out a little bit. So we're going to just say we're just going to bring it out a little bit like that. Here's our pot like this. Okay, and then we start with the flower. So here's some sort of little flower. How big are these flowers? Well, they're, they're about... How big are they? Well, they're not quite, almost an inch, almost an inch, you know, like that. There's a little flower. Here's another one here, a little flower. And um, that, that's pot. So here's flowers. So we got one, two, three, four. Now let's come up here and do another flower above that, another little flower. I'm just going to scribble that in. Then I've got another one here, kind of not quite there. And I've got another one up here. Another flower. Now, by her face, this is where her jaw is. There's this, this little small one like this that's kind of looking at her. And then you're going to fit something in here. And we've got one coming off here, kind of off the canvas. The, the original picture was a little bigger than that, so I had to kind of crowd some things. And then in here we've got two big ones. You know, we've got a nice big one that they touch. Okay, and, and let's see, these don't touch. So we're going to move this over a little bit. Okay, we've got we've got another another one right here. We've got some coming this way. Here, we've got a flower here. This is all going to be green. See the letter G for green. And I've got some sort of flower here. And this is coming. Oh, this flower comes really close to here. That's what happened. This flower moves really close to her sleeve, like that got really close to her sleeve and this one's pretty close in here like that. So that's my sketch. I mean really that's a pretty easy sketch, don't you think? I mean there's really I mean these are these are like chrysanthemums and we're we're just being fast and loose with these flowers, okay? Fast and loose. So now we've got we've got this make sure this is this curve this way, curve it this way. <clears throat> what about our hand? So come over about a quarter of an inch here. Okay, and then this is sort of just comes down to the bottom. It's about a quarter of an inch wide and comes down like that. And there's her arm. There's her hand like this. You didn't have to draw anything. I mean, this is just pretty straightforward. Okay, so far so good. And how did we do? We said we said we got all this drawn in in about 30 minutes. I don't think that's man. You're going yeah yeah, but I didn't draw it in 30 minutes. You may have. But, okay, I'm going to have a little leaf here. So now what we got to do is put some background in, okay? We're going to put some background in. So let's turn this paper over, because I hate messy stuff, okay? And let's put our ruler away. And for those of you who are... John, uh, did you verify the name of this person? Joanne One. What's Joanne's last name? Ford, Joanne Ford, Joanne Ford one. She she looked it up. What is the name of the artist? William Merritt. How do you spell Merritt? M E R. Merritt Chase. Who like the bank? A. And the painting name is Peonies. P spell that. Ooh. So Joanne Ford. Okay, so this was done in 1897. It's pastels done on paper. How cool is this? Where did I put it now? Where, <laughs> where have you put it? Here. Here it is. Pastels done on paper, and this is the picture. How cool is that? And this is what we're painting. So, Joanne, congratulations. John, I want you to go to gingercooklive.gallery, contact us, and uh, let us know. Look in our store and let us know which one of the uh, videos you'd like to win and download. What I love about giving that away is I don't care where you live in the world. You could be watching from Italy or 
China or wherever and you can still win something from us. We're not worried about postage because you can download it, okay? So that was the title of this. Uh, Joanne Ford won and William Merritt Chase, Peonies, 1897. See, in the 1800s, there was a but late 1800s. There was this. Uh, was he an American? What was he, John? Do we know anything about him? We'll find we'll find a little history about this. John will look some up for us. The, the, the every but. Okay, so he was an American uh, impressionist and painter, and the, everybody was big on the Chinese stuff and Japanese stuff at that time. Van Gogh, all of them were 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 doing that. And I think this is kind of cool. So, all right, we need this background. Now, we're not. We're going to take a little yellow oxide like this and add about 1% purple to it. Kind of, And I'm using a ruby satin silver 3-8 inch brush. And what I'm going to do is come right down on top of this with these little up and down marks, okay, like this. And we want to vary the color. So maybe the next time I do it, I'll get a little bit more kind of overlap this like shingles let some of the the bottom part show through this is sort of a kind of a fun way that we're doing this picture I'm going to come right now next to my here's just pure yellow oxide I'll do that a little bit lighter around her head like that and then maybe I'll take a little tiny bit of purple with it and just sort of mix on the canvas sometimes I can put a little purple with something and darken it up purple darkens yellow because it's opposite itself on the color wheel and a yellow oxide is a really nice gold color. So let's just come around her head here like that and get our person in. I think you're going to be surprised how easily this paints in. Now, like I say, we will have this available on our website in a few weeks. And I will have a traceable for you if you feel like you just don't want to draw this in. Fair? And I can do that. I don't mind. Okay, so I'm just going to come down here. We'll have that. We'll have this. It will be, um, and particularly, and if you want to do it bigger, like 8 by 10 or something, we'll have that for you. Okay? But it won't be for a couple of weeks because we're going on vacation. So, you know, don't, don't ask for it right away because we won't have it. Well, John keeps saying, we're not, John says it's not a vacation. We're going to school. We're going to YouTube school. That's right. He's driving down from Michigan. And, and we're working, I know, and we're going to be working on improving the studio here. He's going to help me. You know when I paint here, do you see how everything goes, see how it goes woo -woo -woo like that? Well, he's going to help me change my desk. I've got all kinds of desks. This is a table. I've, got, I've You didn't know that, did you? But you're, I elected to have him help me change my desk a little bit. I think I need to bring this collar back some more, which I will do. All right, there's our, let's come down here like this under here. And, uh, you know, just keep putting in our stuff. Let me zoom out just a hair so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, now, underneath here, underneath the flowers, I'm going to add more purple to this. I want a little bit of purple, and I want this darker underneath where the, this part next to our, and, and kind of near here, underneath where her chin's going to go. I'm going to just make it a little bit darker under here. I can always add more flowers, so I'm going to make this a little bit darker. Put a little bit of yellow with that so it's not pure purple, but uh, just kind of blend that in. We had such a good time last night. It was supposed to be, I don't know if any of you got to see what we did last night, besides give awards away to good, you know, to deserving uh, individuals. But um, let's see, now I'm going to take a little bit of um, gold and yellow oxide and a little bit of burnt umber, mix those together and add a little bit of that in here too. Start layering some darker colors like that and how about a little bit of cad red medium and and cad yellow medium like this now while this is still wet because i don't want this too bright and i might just add a little bit of this while this is still wet in here do you see that see how i'm sort of brightening up the background a bit like this i don't want it really orange but i do want to brighten it up a bit like that and, and blend the more you go over it you want to sort of squish it into the yellow oxide if you get too much put a little yellow oxide over it but you want to get in the habit of layering your colors. Okay, so, all right, so far so good. You say that there's our neck and there's our person. Here's our stuff. Now, what should we paint next? This was fun. Yeah. Oh, I tell you what, let's, let's paint her coat next. I like that. All right, I'm grabbing some cad red medium. Coming right on top of here like that. Look at that, right on the sleeve here. Let's just come in here and paint her sleeve. 
That's fun. And, going, and maybe I'll paint a little bit of cad yellow medium with it too. Kind of brighten the sleeve up a bit. Like that. See, it's over the brown, so we, because, because we're not going over white, it, it's going to tone it down just somewhat. Here, like that. I'm going to paint this whole painting in this little brush. Now, I'm going to take a little bit of brown, and right up here on the sleeve, I'm going to blend in a little bit of this darker brown shadow color right here. A little tiny bit right there. Tap that and blend that in. Okay, and I'll put a little bit of a darker brown here. Red, and then back to the red. Let's get some naphthal crimson now. Come under here with our red now. That's our red red. Now we're going to paint the rest of the kimono in. A little bit of naphthal crimson. Okay, like this. A little bit brighter. Now I'm going to take a little bit of cad red medium and put with it. Okay, so it's not just that color. Okay, here's our and let's take a little bit of yellow here, right in here like that. Maybe a little bit of yellow, brighten this up right like there. Maybe take a little bit yellow, just cad yellow medium, white white while it's wet. Put it on here, wipe it off. Kind of lighten up the sleeve right along here, this edge. Kind of up and down movements. Oh yeah, the collar here. Let's get her collar. Let's just I've got to make the collar a little bit long taller than I did. So cad red medium. Here's our collar. Bring it down like that. It's a pretty outfit. Oh, I learned a new thing today, John. I learned something really new. And I was, it was about this guy in um, Delo... Okay, I have to think about what they called it. Some guy in the 1700s, he wrote the Encyclopedia Britannica. And he didn't have money for his daughter for a dowry. So Catherine the Great uh, said she'd buy the, the collection of his books from him for like equivalent of today's money about fifty thousand dollars. Here's a little bit of purple I'm adding to the red here while we're talking. And anyway, so he got so excited. I'll have to show you the pictures I found. He took not only his daughter got married, that was nice, okay? But uh, let's see, I want some dark brown back here on the other side of the sleeve down here, okay? And I want a little dark brown shadow right here under the sleeve. Like that. Use the the nice thing about these angle brushes is you can use them right on the edge. Okay, I'll just put a little shadow in the, just blend some little dark in here at the base, like that. Okay, now, while this is drying, aren't you guys, don't you think this is fun? This is not, this is, we're just moving right along with our little stuff here. Okay, so anyway, so he, here I need a little bit of dark brown behind the collar to kind of emphasize that, not too much. So anyway, he went and bought himself this beautiful, beautiful uh, kind of lounging robe, all out of silk and stuff. I think it was red. I, th I thought of this because of this girl, what she's wearing. And then he looked around his house and felt that his house was so shabby because it didn't. nothing went with this fancy outfit he had. So then he felt like he had to upgrade the furniture. And, and, and before you know it, then he got the, upgraded the desk, and then the couch looked a little, or the settee looked a little old and shabby. And... And by the time he got through, he had gone broke, uh, upgrading everything to go with the new outfit. And they actually, this was the 1700s, and they actually have a word for this, where, <laughs> and it's called the, and I'm thinking it's a delicate effect or something like that. It's funny. All right. Why am I painting this white? Everybody don't speak at once. Why are we painting this white? Okay. Okay. I'm going to paint this white here like that. Don't, you know, there's our... Okay, I'm not going to paint the flowers in yet, but I'm going to paint that white, and you can be thinking about why I'm doing it. Okay, the next thing I want to paint is my green. So, we want a bright, bright green. Last night, we did the coolest thing, if I have it somewhere. Where's our picture? And people were commenting on the greens. That's what we had. We commented on the greens. I lay all this stuff out ahead of time so you guys can see it. And then I surprise myself and hide it on the desk. It's extraordinary how this happens. <laughs> but I did have that picture of what we did last night. Well, I mean, huh. Well, eventually I'll find it. We'll talk about it. But anyway, we want a bright green. So, how are we going to make a really bright green? 
Well, let's see. Color wheel, you guys. Color wheel's got a grayscale on it. So, if your color is going to fall on the lighter side of the, every color wheel comes with a grayscale. It should. Okay. Here's the light, light, light tones of gray. In other words, if we made this into a black and white photo, where would this green fall on the color wheel? Well, there's in some darker colors, but there's some real light ones here too. It's probably on this side. So that means that we're going to start with yellow. Okay, because we're going to make a light green, yellow and blue being green. So we're going to start with yellow and white. So I'm going to start here in the plate, a little bit of cad yellow, medium, and white, make this nice yellow color like that. Then I'm going to get a tiny bit of blue, more yellow, more bright yellow. This is thalo blue, more bright yellow. Really want this bright, going to get more yellow to it. All right, now I've got a bright, bright green. It's like my ruler green, see? It's bright like that, isn't it? Okay, and, and, and so now I'll put a tiny bit of yellow oxide in it, which has a little bit of red in it. Red grays green. Why does red gray green? Because, I mean, can we go over this stuff, grays green. What do we mean by that? I don't know, so if you have a circus color, you need to tone it back. And so if it's color, any color that's opposite itself on the color wheel or its complement, red is the complement of green. So if you add a touch of red to green, You'll knock it back and won't make won't be so bright. And yellow oxide has red in it, so that's why we're doing that. So here's our here's our bright green color right over the yellow. Now you guys remember why we did this, because I needed this bright I needed this bright green. Okay, here it is. I'm gonna say that there's our there's our bright green background here. I wanted this nice and bright. Now if I want to darken this green a little bit. I'll just add a little more thalo blue and maybe a touch of purple like that and I'll darken the green and I'll put some dark green streaks in here. Maybe some little shadows coming this way. Down in here like this. Bring this across like this. Remember this is curves. Okay, so green and red are complements. That's why this looks so good. Green and red are complements. So now we've done the little bit of green um, desk or whatever this is. We'll add more color later. So that's all we're doing with the green. Now we've got to rinse the brush. When you rinse your brush, please make sure you're touching the bottom of your container and then wipe it off on a towel like this. Pinch it off, make sure there's, because we're going to go into golds now. We're going to go ahead and paint our pot a little bit of yellow oxide here. Okay. We're going to come around here like this and we're going to paint this pot in. Very similar to it, some sort of big copper pot. All right. Now, as I come over here, I'm getting into a little bit of the cad red mediums. And I'm going to say that there's a little bit of a highlight here coming on this side of the pot. Now, right into the yellow. I'm going to start brightening this up a bit. Wipe my brush and try to lighten this up here like this. And here's my here's my pot. But everything's kind of up and down. We'll put the highlights on later, but I want to make sure I have the curve. I have this pot curved like that. So there's not a lot to this pot, really, honestly, there isn't. There's a little bit of a dark, you know, shadow here, I think and um, something dark next to our kimono, a little bit of brown right here, something dark. There's really not much, okay, like that, there we go. All right, now, what happens? Well, we were into yellow, so let's zoom in. All right, aren't you surprised how fast this is going in, really, when you think about it? I mean, it really it just goes, it's not, once I've, once I've laid, not, sometimes I have to think about what I'm doing, but once I've knocked it out the first time, there's not a lot to, you know, now you, we're not doing this real big. So here's what's a little bit of purple here. I'm going to do a little bit of a purple outline here, just holding a knife edge with the, with the, um, and let's see, a little bit of a darker shadow right here where the pot is over that green like that. Okay coming around like this. Okay, and I've got a little bit of something dark here, and I'm going to have something dark under my flowers, so I might as well put that in there now. My flowers will go on top of that. 
that. Okay. So far, so good. Now, now what? Oh, yeah. Let's get out the yellow, pure yellow. And let's paint in the OB. Remember, yellow only paints over white. So if I want this bright, want this bright, now I'll take a little bit of yellow oxide with it and make it less bright. But I wanted to start off with it at least as bright as I wanted. I can always tone down yellow, but it's hard to get it this bright again once you've done that. And I want a little bit of a light highlight right here, so I'm just going to scoop up some paint like this and kind of layer it on there. It's got a little green with it. That's perfect. A little light highlight there. Some little light highlight right there. Ooh, that's good. Okay, so now we're going to let that sit. Now what? Oh. Well, while we're letting all that sit, let's do some skin tones. Okay, so we're going to start with white, yes. A little bit of cad red medium, like that. Some sort of little peach color, tiny bit of yellow. Okay, like that. That's pretty good. Let's. I think my yellow is kind of contaminated. It has too much green in it, so I have to give a new spot of yellow out. Because I don't want green in it. In fact, I even have green in my cap. Look at that. I had green on the cap. Look at that. Okay, here's a little bit of yellow in this. All right, tiny bit of purple, like less than 1%. You know, it's just like on the tip of my brush here, a little bit of purple. Okay, I'm going to tone that down. Okay, so that's kind of a nice skin tone here. Here's my thumb. That's not bad. Okay, that'll work for now. All right, so I'm going to come here like this and just let's say there's her arm coming down like that. Okay, her wrist, we haven't toned. And now let's get her... Let's get her neck like that. And okay, so this brush may be too big for this. At this point, I will just put this brush away and get out a smaller one. What do I got? Do I have anything smaller? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna just use a I'm gonna use a brush like this, a liner brush. I'm gonna go ahead because I need to kind of get her face a little bit. I'm going to take that other brush out in a minute, but I'm going to paint this in like this. And I don't have the... Con uh, I, surprisingly, I do not have the control with this one that I had with the with the other one. I like these angles because th what happens is these bend and then you get you don't get good resistance. So what we need is a small little angle brush like this. This is a one quarter inch angle brush. Now watch the difference. Huh? So much better. Here's the ear. Here's her jawline like this. Here's the kind of a, her face like this. It's coming this way. Now, if I want this a little bit darker under her chin, I'll just add a little bit more cad red medium to that and say under her chin here, behind her ear, it's a little bit darker. And maybe I'll put a little bit on her ear, back of her neck. Now, here's where you have to remember how you did the background because. I've got to come in here and give her a give her some plastic surgery. I love it, don't you? We're gonna just kind of remove some of her chin a little bit like that. That's that's easy to do. And as long as I'm in the brown, let's just get her hair. We'll just take some burnt umber now and give her hairdo. Kind of kind of kind of came around here in the front like that. She had some sort of bang, kind of some sort of puffy bangy things here. And then here was her hair, and some sort of bun back up here. This curved around. Remember, this curves back. Make sure that this is curving back to her head, and her hair starts stops right about here. I'm gonna do a little line under her neck. Do a little line right here on her jaw. Okay. And then I'm just gonna come down here like this, and make sure I have it dark enough. here and here. Okay. All right. Now, you can see that I don't have it light enough, okay? But as long as I'm doing that, let's um let's just put some of that brown with this and I'm going to just make this a little darker right here on her hand. Okay. And let's see. I want a bit a little bit darker under her chin. It's doing this. It just straightens out like that. 
and you barely see you don't see the nose this is what was so interesting to me you really you just see this like almost this little triangle for the nose you barely see the nose coming out like that you just barely see it I'll zoom in because this is a you know kind of loose now we need it lighter right so what do we do we just add more white to the skin tone mixture like that now we're going to come up here on the neck and to lighten up the skin tone right here right on top of that that worked and the same thing on her face gonna lighten up her face right here I mean that's kinda working yeah now let's come back here and do it a little bit more Come out here at the nose Here's her. the lighter part stays in front of her ear her ears a little light right here. I mean, we're not doing a lot of detail. We are suggesting a person. That's that's the best I can tell you. We're suggesting some sort of person here, and I want to come back with my cad red medium and make sure that I've got this collar kind of turned back this way. I'm going to give it another coat of red here now. Red is one of those colors that needs several coats. I promise you, that's one of the things that's good to know about reds is that they need they need more color. Look what happens when I add some more color on this red. If you were painting a red door in your house, for instance, just if you were wild and crazy and decided you wanted a red door, you'd probably want to do three coats of paint. Red is just one of those colors that really appreciates having several coats on it if you want it to show up. Now look at how this is sh showing up brighter, what we did here. Okay, like that. Let me zoom back out and you can see. Because if your acrylics dry darker, all right, so far could be we could come up a little lighter on her hair on her face. We can do that. Um, we could. I want to make sure I have. This is where your water mister comes in, kind of miss the paints. I want to make sure I have a little bit of a darker chin right here, under here. Make sure this is darker right here, down the back of her neck. There's a little shadow, a little bit on the touch of her ear, a little bit on underneath her sleeve here. It's a little bit darker. And then we see where do we do with that light stuff? Yes, yeah, we said on her hand. See, we're gonna lighten this up on her hand, just this part, front part of her hand, like that. See. And then if you've got the hand too big, you just come back here with some dark brown, rinse the brush, and skinny it up. If you got her wrist too big, this is hard to screw up acrylics. Okay, so we're gonna just come in here like that and make it a little smaller. Okay, there you go. There's her wrist. There's her. Oh, now what should we do for highlights in her hair? He didn't have it, but I just put some Cadbread Medium for lead highlights. I just wanted some sort of little highlights in her hair. I'm sorry. Felt like th there ought to be something. Maybe there was and it just didn't show up in the picture. But I'm going to just give her just a couple little red highlights in here. Cadbread Medium highlights. If you get too much, you can put a little you know, dark brown back over it. Tone them down, but there. So now her hair is like that. There's that. Now what? Okay, so it's, I promise you, this is not going to take a whole hour and a half to complete. Are you kind of, are you kind of surprised, John? Because he, because he, he, I think we're going to get this done in an hour and a half. All right, I promise you. I want this kind of her dress to come kind of in front of the pot here, like that. Her little kimono, come down here like that. There. All right. So now what? Ooh, what? What should we do next? Oh yeah, let's take some of this um, yellow and a little bit of this cad red medium and make a light orange, more like 75, 85 percent yellow and a little bit of that. And let's come along here and make a yellow highlight on the pot, like that, a couple places. And maybe we'll do a little bit of a light orange highlight right here, like that. And here and now, I think I'm going to put a little bit of yellow oxide on part of this so it's not so bright. Like that. Wipe the brush off and then come up and down here like this. Barely touch the brush and do some sort of reflections on this pot. Okay? Like that. And he was, he was doing pastel. We're not. But this kind of works, right? Some sort of reflections on the pot. Like that. This is probably a little brighter than I want. But that, we'll, we'll tone it down later if we don't like it. Mm. put a little bit of yellow oxide on that just tiny bit 
tap that on there just push that back a little bit okay all right now next I want to make sure this is I have a dark line here I want to make sure that that's curved okay like this okay we should take a minute and dry everything we've done this far pretty good don't you guys think we haven't dried anything we're gonna just take a minute and dry everything that's our next trick we'll dry everything The reason I'm doing that, the reason I'm doing that is that red and green are complements on the color wheel, which means if you start putting green over wet red, you can be in trouble. And also, I did not want pink flowers. I wanted to make sure our flowers were there but had more of a purple cast, cast to them in the tones. So, I think what I want to do here is take some white, tiny bit of Dawsoning purple, like look next to nothing, a little tiny bit of cad yellow medium, like that, like less than 1%. Okay, I'm going to make this sort of light, light purple color. Can you see it right here like this, up on the side of the plate? Now I'm going to come up here like this in front of her face. And I'm going to make the, make the startings of the shadows of a lighter flower. I'm going to do another one in here like this. Some sort of light flower here. Um, we know we've got one basically right here next to her kimono. Like then using just a knife blade here. Okay, there's one here and then we've got another one right here. This is just our darker color first. All right, we'll do those two. Now I'm going to come back with some white right over the top of these. Let's say here's a flower. And then here's one. It's a nice white little flower just using this little edge like that. Do I need to zoom in? Okay. Yeah, so kind of, now I'm going to just, just using the edge of this brush, you see how I'm not, I, I want some of that purple to show through underneath. And just taking just the edge of this little sharp ruby satin silver brush. I'm telling you what, I love these brushes. Victoria will tell you, she wrote me and said that she had not believed how good a brush could be until she found these. And um, and they really are good. So that was a little more yellow. So okay, so we're going to say there's that one. Then we got another one up here like this. Some sort of a, just going to go back to the purple here. Got another one right here like that. And let's see, oh, a big one here. This is a fun one. Say so here's some sort of big flower. Almost like pom-poms. This is impressionistic painting, so we're not talking about photorealism. You're just suggesting flowers at this point, okay? So all you're doing is you're suggesting flowers. And we're going to suggest another big one right here. Like that. Okay, we're just starting to put in our flowers. And I've got a nice one in the middle here, too. And this one he painted a little differently. He almost did it kind of circular. These others are all kind of like these little lines that are going out. This one he did more circular. He did a couple of these very circular, which I, I, didn't, I don't know. It's like almost like he changed the way he did the flowers. Kind of made these little petals going around in a circle like this. You see that? He, he did these center ones like something like this, you know what I mean? But these others he's doing like that. With this, it's, it's weird, but that's okay. I like the picture, so we're not going to criticize it's what he did. Uh, we're just moving right along and enjoying our experience with the painting. Okay, so then we had one here, and then down here we've got another one. Okay, it's kind of sticking off down here like this. Back to the little knife thingies and then down here we've got one
Okay, so there's some starting to get our little and this is just our background colors with this we need it, our little shadow color. And then I've got one that's going off the canvas like this. In his picture I can show you this is so much narrower. In his picture, he had one going off here, but we just don't have room for it. I didn't like it anyway. But you know, I'm, again, not criticizing, just personally that was just me. But again, if you did this bigger and you wanted to look him up, you, I'm showing you how you'd paint this, so it wouldn't matter if you did this on a larger canvas. You certainly could. Okay, so you can see now we've got these flowers sort of laid in. This one up here in the front had more yellow to it, so I'm going to take a little bit of yellow oxide and white. Okay, and come up here on this one and go over the purple like that and make this one in here. There was a little bit of this yellow in a couple of places up here. And in some of these, a little bit of yellow. Just putting it on those. Nothing too scary here. We'll just add a little bit of yellow. Okay, so we haven't done any more of the highlights, but um, maybe a little bit on this one. That's just yellow oxide and white. And I haven't cleaned my brush, so there may be some purple on it. Maybe a little bit on this one. Okay, a little bit. Okay, so you can see how we're sort of building these up. All right, so far so good. Okay, so now what we have to do is dry everything. So as long as I'm in that light yellow though, that kind of light yellow color, remember the yellow oxide and white, remember that? That was the yellow oxide color. It's all coming back to you guys now. That was like three minutes ago, so you, no one's forgotten it that quick. Okay, so mostly white. now. We're going to do some little, using just a corner of our brush, we're just doing, doing a few little decorations on the kimono. Some sort of little dotted flower things that just, it was very vague, so I don't know. Coming down here like that. And then on the kimono here, we're just, just almost like four leaf clover shapes. Some of them maybe a three leaf clover. Just doesn't have to be exactly something. Maybe one case is just a dot. This was some sort of little embroidered kimono thing here. One right here on the edge. Down here like that. I, I, I think I want a few here. I want another one down. I want some more down on the sleeve. And certainly around the collar. There was some like that going around the collar. Zoom back out. And then I'll take some white now. Now this is the trick. I'll go in with a little tiny bit of white in a couple of these because that was the off-white and I'll put a few little dots of white in a few places on there one two three four those were the little okay all right maybe there's a little one up here under the this thing all right so there's her little kimono and I think we had a big one down here too yeah okay something off the edge all right so okay so far so good now, time to do the greens. You're going, look how just, look how this laid in. I just have to say, you see how nicely this, this whole thing lays in. It's just almost, it's just step by step. It lays in, I think, very nicely. Um, all right, so if I want a dark green, I, I made it already, but I'm going to start with phthalo blue, a little bit of cad yellow medium, tiny bit of purple. Don't have to dry. And I'm going to come up here around here like this and I'm going to tap in everywhere this is brown. I'm going to put in this dark green color, which is like almost a blue green. Just coming right in here like that into our flowers. We will at some point dry. John wanted to know if we wanted to dry. And we're, we're pretty good here. It's a little bit darker here. Some dark here. And there's a little dark leaf here, a little dark leaf coming up there, a little dark leaf up here. See, I love this little brush because it allows uh, for different shapes and angles. All right, so it sort of made all that dark. Now what happens? Well, this is really cool. Take a little bit of white and that light green color we just made and come on here like this and tap it in. And then you just do some light, lighter blue leaves like that. And we're going to say that um, 
this one right here had a little bit of dark green against it like that like that maybe there's some little blue leaf coming in here maybe I'll even do some blue and white there just add a little bit of blue to this because remember blue and orange are complements you know turquoise and orange are complements so if you add a little bit of the halo blue and white just a couple places here like that so here's our green leaf like that All right, so somebody said, where do we get the ruby satin silver brushes from? Well, I tell you what, I, I, a lot of art stores carry them, but I've never, I haven't seen this collection of angle brushes before. I love the quarter, I love the angles, I love all of these. And my favorite place to get these now is from the brush, they're called the Brush Guys, www.thebrushguys.com. And if you guys know my daughter, Cinnamon, she made a deal with those guys to give us uh, get us a 5% discount if you mention the Art Sherpa on any brush they sell there. They also sell the Simply Simmons. The difference between a Simply Simmons angle brush, and they're good. Here's a Simply Simmons angle brush. They're not as good as the Ruby Satin Silvers, but again, they're talking about a $2 brush as opposed to a $7 brush. Okay? So that does, but honestly, if what you're talking about just ease of control, these are fantastic. And I figure, why not, um, why not celebrate those? Okay, so I'm going to come in here a little bit with some dark. And so you have to write in the art sherpa in the code, all one word, to get the discount. But it's five percent, which then is the shipping. Because I don't know about you guys, but when I buy online, I'm so spoiled by Amazon. I'm a Prime member. I really don't want to pay anybody for shipping. If they want shipping, they can practically keep it. I find these art stores just start to annoy me. Okay. Just, just just, tell us how you really feel, Ginger. But yeah, that's really how I feel. Okay, it's a little bit of green under here. Maybe a little darker green down in here next to her dress. Start to put a little bit of that in here like that. Okay, now there's our green. Okay, so we're getting there. And our little green leaves. It's kind of a, kind of a half thing. And then I had a, um, let's see, where's my purple? I love what we write down what stuff is because after a while it's hard to remember where anything goes. Okay, this was sort of a half flower here, so I want to put make sure I have that like like that. Okay, now we're gonna dry. Okay, and then we're gonna finish off with lightening her face a little more and putting the white on the flowers, and we're gonna be done. Come on, this is kind of cool, isn't it? Let me move this out of the way and get another one. Get another one. So, there. Yes. What about it? Yeah. Well, the question was, what about my, how did my painting get to the, there's a, there's a show on TV called Pawn Stars in Las Vegas. And somebody asked about that. How did you get, how did your painting get, and to Pawn Stars. Well, you know, when it, that is a cool show, and I feel very honored that they and they kept it. They have it on the wall in one of the, one of my paintings on the wall. One of my friends actually found it for me. This was a couple this was a couple episodes ago, like last year or something. She said, "Did you know your paintings on Pawn Stars?" I had no idea. Well, probably somebody. I used to uh, have several galleries in Las Vegas that collected my art. You know, that sold my art, and so I have I have collectors, believe it or not, in Las Vegas. Well, you know, I've shown there several times, and um, so somebody probably needed money and brought the painting into Pawn Stars and asked if it was, and they bought it. So I think that that's kind of nice. And uh, I, I've got a friend, his name is Brett Maley, and he I used to be in his gallery, and he knows my work, and he is their main appraiser for them. And we're doing a little light purple here, and then we have to dry this. I just want to put a stem on this flower right like that. Sorry, maybe one here like that. Cut. I needed a stem here. Sorry. Okay. So anyway, so Brett Maley um, uh, knew those people. Here's one more thing before we dry. Here's a little dark brown. I want to put that underneath this little dark brown underneath my obi here, my little sash. Okay. Make sure. And I think I need this flower over more, but that's okay. Maybe I need my, let's see, let me just measure something real quick. How wide is this? This is an inch and a quarter, and I have it this an inch and a quarter. I'm right. So that means the flower has to come over more. Okay. 
So we can do that when it dries. So anyway, that's how my painting ended up on Pawn Stars. And I think that's kind of cool. And, it, and you see it in the background on hanging on the wall. So cool. Okay, so here's our picture. We're getting there. Now acrylics dry darker, so even her face is darker than I want, but I can I can come up with her skin tones again. But it's all very nice, you know, how we've got the light and the dark here. Okay, so let's let's make sure we have a clean brush, no green on it. Let's go into white now and start putting the white on our flowers using this little one, like this. And I'm gonna say here's the one that was right under her chin here. I like this one. And I've got I'm gonna make a bigger one right here too. We've got a bigger flower right here. Okay, like this. And again, we're gonna whiten up this flower like that and bring it over. So let's bring these over here like that. A little bit bigger flowers. And um Okay, one, two, three, one, two. I'm actually missing one here, but that's okay. In this picture this will work. Here's some white. Pure white now, we're just starting to, do you see what a difference that makes when you dry it and then you're going back over it with white? And here's this flower here, we're just going to come around here and doing those little circular motions, almost like a rose. The same thing here. It's just I should zoom in and show you how I'm doing this. Okay. And just using just the corner of the brush, white paint. And I've dried it, so this should be fine. Same with this one. Now it's starting to pop. See how the picture is starting to pop? And let's see, how, uh, certainly over here like this. Here we go, some nice white ones in here like this. And up here like this. And that little bit of that purple. Don't cover up that purple. Let that purple show, show underneath. That's the key is you do these darker colors underneath and then the lighter colors on top. So it's starting to get brighter. And oh I'm glad we I'm glad we found out the name of this artist. I think that's super. That was the fastest contest we've ever done, John. I love it. Well we'll do more of those. Now we're we're gonna do more of those things. We'll have these little kind of quizzes and see who comes up with that stuff. Because you guys are all so smart. I love it. Okay, so we're going to say here's this one. I'm going to put another one right here. I didn't have it, and it's going right here. Now, interestingly, you, you see how it's going a little blue on me? Why is that, Ginger? Well, it's going a little blue on me, this other flower that's going in here, because I don't hate it, though, either. John says he likes it. So here's this other little flower just sort of tucked in here like that. And I want a little blue down here at the base to put this up on her collar. There, it just we were just short a flower here. Now let's um, believe it or not, we need some kind of we need, actually need more white in here. But this one had a little orange, kind of a light orange color, that kind of bright kind of this color. There was a little orange in this flower right here, like this on this bottom one, had red medium in here, like that somewhere. Um, don't ask me why, but there was. And then let's take a little bit of white and purple and come over the top of this one. Darken this a little bit. Darken the shadow on this one. And now more white. More white, you guys. Let's just lighten these up again. More white. I love acrylics, but they... You, you're painting along, bopping along, thinking you're doing absolutely splendid. And you turn around and look and say, gosh, it just got darker on me again. So sometimes you just have to go over things. I think we had a little bit of the, this orange up here in this one. I, I put it, so I'm going to put it back like that. Okay, Maybe up in here, too, just because of the collar. Bring that down like that. And let's put a little white 
over this so it's not tone that down. So it's there. Make that a bigger flower. This is a nice big flower down here on our pot. And this one's a nice big one. These are nice and big. Kind of warm this one up. So you keep adding colors to these. And whatever happened to this one? Yeah, we kind of lost the. And that one's touching. Okay, and then this one for sure we need to. It needs a little TLC. Okay, now if you get carried away, it's okay. You can come back with your dark green. And you can do some surgical strikes in here like this with the dirt dark green color. If you need to. If you need to say, okay, so I'm going to just come up here like that and make that one smaller. Put a little blue up in here. Make something darker under here. I'll take a little purple under this one. That'll make this flower show up a little bit. Make some dark. I just need to put a little dark purple on a couple places. A little bit of dark under this flower. Like that. Okay, so see how it started showing up? Because wherever there's a dark, there's a light. So if you have a little dark color somewhere, it's definitely going to show up for you. Here's a little bright yellow green leaf here, like that. Like this, a little leaf. A little bit of dark in here, next to here. Here, like this, and a little bit darker in this flower. A little bit darker here. Now, zoom back out. Zooming out. Where's the zooming button? See, is that kind of cool? It's just, I think that's coming out very nicely. Um, here's a little turquoise in white, which we had a little turquoise up in here like that, next to this pot. Up in here like that. A little bit of, make sure I have my turquoise up here. There we go. Put the turquoise back. Oh, what are we going to do next? Oh, well, I think what we should do next, make sure that we have a nice little green leaf sticking down here like that. A yellow leaf there. Um, yellow and orange here. Maybe something right here on this pot on this edge. Some yellow right like this. Here's our highlight on this pot coming this way. Okay, lighten that up. Now, I think the last thing we need to do is probably take two things. We gotta get a little yellow oxide here. I wanna just kind of drag a little bit on my cross this way on this surface here. So you're just sort of dry brushing this on here like that. Okay, kind of there. Make sure, make sure I do have a nice dark line. Oops, too wide under this pot. Okay, like that, kind of showing up. A little bit more white right here on the tip next to her kimono on this flower. Okay. And let's lighten her face up. And I'd say we were I'd say we were pretty good. It's okay. Lighten this up a bit. Okay. So back to the skin tones. White. And a little bit of cad yellow medium, a little tiny bit of um uh, uh, maybe even some yellow oxide. Let's try that. Let's see about that. A little bit more white. Let's test it. Yeah, let's see if that this will. Let's see if that'll bring this up just a little bit lighter on her face. There we go. bit around her ear like that. Lighten up her face just a hair and her arm right down here like that. And get her neck lightened up right. Make sure that's curving this way. And she's got this little triangle underneath here that's darker. And a little tiny bit right around here around her ear. See I can use this little brush for that. It's a little shadow under her ear. Zoom in. And maybe I'll take a little tiny bit of cad yellow medium. Oh, that looks green. I don't want that. What happened there? Okay, brown back over that. 
Let's see, I want uh, yellow oxide, I think. Just a, something in her hair a little bit like this. Okay, and let's see. Let's make this, bring this line down here a little bit more under her jaw. Kind of get, again, give her a little bit of surgery here, right here, under her jawline. Make that a little darker. And let's change this. Make that line, that was a little wide, so let's make that a little thinner. Okay, just take a little paint color and make that thinner. Let's see, where's our ear? Bring that up. Here's her forehead, make sure I've got, brought that out. Okay, now, um, the, he had, I don't know, this was some sort of fancy wallpaper in the background. So he had a little bit of gold back in here. You can dry brush. Um, just pure yellow oxide. We're going to dry brush on here like that in a few places on the background. And then I'm going to pinch my brush off and just sort of, this is dried a little bit now. So I'm going to just bring that back up here. Just a few little bright spots in this background. I'm going to bring it a little bit, like a little bit closer to her face. I'm going to make it a little bit lighter, like here, like that. And I mean, just I have a little red on this. So let's pull our. Remember, we did yellow oxide for the background. Did you guys forget? Because it's been a while. It's like an hour ago we did the background. So yellow oxide, and we did a little bit of purple, if you guys remember. We also did a little orange. So here's yellow oxide and tiny bit of purple. So I'm almost going to repaint the background in a little bit because I want it darker in some places and lighter in others. Now that I've seen it, maybe a little bit of cad red, medium, and yellow too. Make an orange. There we go. There. Now, what do you do with that? Well, you pinch your brush off and sort of blend that in. Then take a little bit of cad red medium, go right the yellow oxide, go over that. I just wanted to brighten it up around her face. Without make it a little bit brighter here. Come down around the flowers. And again, this is good too because if you got a little carried away with your flowers and you need to poke a few holes in them, you can. Or if you made them too big, you know how to fix that, right? If you made your leaf too big. Okay, maybe put a little of that in this dark. And, uh, oh yeah, so let's pull some red, red right over here like this on her dress, in front of this, um, in front of the pot like that, a few little red highlights. Question, yes, John, a little question. We have, we're, we're up for questions. Somebody wants to know what the name of retarder and blending gel was. I'm not a big fan of retarder. It kind of goes gummy on you. Blending gel should not. Blending gel is, um, they have blending gel in, a, in a also in more of a, a form like this. They make blending gel like a blending liquid, which is okay, and they make a gel. And um, it just keeps the paint longer. You notice that I rarely use mediums. If you've been watching me enough here, you guys have been kind of following along with me. I want to make sure I have her, the hair down the back of her neck like that, like this. If you've been watching me for a while, um, you'll notice that I don't use a lot of mediums like that. I mean, it's, it's just, just I just have never found it necessary, so I'm, I'm just not a big fan of that. Um, so, I, but if you were doing like a giant painting, like a seascape or something, and you needed big stretches of of, of canvas that were one color, you certainly uh, could add a, a, a blending gel with it and they're, they're very nice and, and nothing wrong with using that. I, I tell you what, I think I developed the speed I did painting, I'm going to reshape this flower a little bit, uh, and, had, and I, I was able to do that because I, I, because I have to, because everything's drying as fast as I can put it on here, so I have a tendency to paint very fast. If that makes sense. So you'll see me paint very fast. I'm getting a little bit of yellow now and white. And I'm going to make this flower a little bit brighter right here. I want some yellow right there. 
There's our OB. Okay, you guys, I would say that was our, that's our picture. And I think it came out very well. I hope you guys thought so too. Still could make this, uh, let me just move this over here. Maybe the light's better over here. Probably could come up even a little bit more on the, um, on her, on her neck with a lighter color. Uh, just maybe just slightly lighter on her neck a little bit, just slightly. But not not much. Okay, so I think that we're I think we're gonna call that a painting, you guys. And then I'm gonna use get my nifty little pen here from I got this on Amazon. I don't I, I like this um though it doesn't varnish over as easily. The other thing you can buy too is Sharpie makes an oil painting, fine tip oil painting pen, which is really good too. This is called a, but I always like to tell you what I'm using, this is called a Uniball Signo pen. And I like it because you can it's sign it very easily. You know, like that. You can sign it very easily. And you know, if you needed to, if you had some white, you needed to come around here like this and, you know, maybe make a few little details, you could. You know what I mean? You could come here and depending on, I'm not, I'm just saying you could do that if you wanted to too. If you're having a little trouble with details, you could do that with this pen which would be sort of fun. So I hope that this was fun. And let me just show you the original picture, which was, uh -huh. okay, so here's our, here's our original picture. And again, I think we need to lighten up her neck a little bit. But the problem with printing anything out in a photograph like this is that um, um, it bleaches it out. So it, this, this is not necessarily the true color. That is the other problem that, that comes with this. Um, when I'm looking at that, I'm going to take a little brown for her hair. Which one was I working on? This one? Yeah. And I'm going to just square off the back of her ear here a little bit. Put a little dark paint here. I think that was purple, but it's all right. I'll use brown. I'll put brown over it. Okay, because again, I'm going to just sort of punch your hair up a little bit like that. There we go. Come down here, here like that. Okay, so I like that better. Just small little things that we can do to make this a pretty vase. And so if you enjoyed this, I hope you, you guys had fun painting, you know, had painting along or maybe just follow along and you're going to, you know, maybe try this tomorrow. Not sure when that would be, but... But remind them tomorrow, there is no live class tomorrow at, um, um, there's no live class tomorrow uh, at 1 o'clock because we're, we're getting ready to go out of town. Both of us have a lot of stuff to do. Even though I'm not going anywhere, I'm getting ready for it too. John's getting ready. So again, we're not doing a, a, a big live class tomorrow. So, uh, oh, you know what we forgot here on this one? What? You know what we forgot? Um, oh, two things, two things we forgot. We're going to bring down this um, wall a little bit further on this one. I'm going to bring it down a little bit more like that. I got it up too high. All right, so far so good. Got to bring that wall down. And then we got to put the, there were some white flower petals that fell on here. We'll show you the original too. See these little white flower petals that kind of fell here. So we're gonna we have to put those we have to be authentic here. So here, just a little keep them level. Don't get go get them. If you do something straight up and down, it means it's falling. You want to keep them level. Here's a couple little. Just suggest some of these little white petals fell here. Okay. And then if I said that happened there, then I got to bring my shadow back here a little bit darker under under here. My dark green right here. I need this a little bit darker right around the pot. There. Okay. So now we've got it. There's our there's our pot. There's our dark color. Let's make this a little dark right here. A little bit of dark shadow there. And we're in good shape. So that's how we painted Lady in Red. And what was the title of it really, John? There was a real title to this. I call it Lady in Red because, um, but the Pe peonies. This is called peonies, but I think I think Lady in Red is a much cooler title. 
So that's what I'm calling it. But it's actually peonies. And our on our our um our artist was I threw that paper away. That's what happened. I threw it down on the floor. Here, I'm rolling over it with my chair. I'm gonna just find it. Ah, our artist was William Merritt Chase, like the Chase Bank. And Joanne Ford was the one that guessed the right name, and she, we looked it up on our sources, and that is exactly right. So she is going to go ahead and go to gingercooklive.gallery, which is our website where we do our weekly lessons, and she's going to then look at our stuff that we have for sale. We have over 15. There's just one sheet of the videos that we have that you can download because not everybody um, you know, is up for the monthly subscribing lessons. Though I tell you what, you can do nine days of lessons for $9.95 on our website, which is a deal. So since we're going to leave this up, we appreciate the likes and the co comments. That really helps people find us on the search engine. Again, we appreciate you guys watching. I think we did this pretty well. We did this in an hour and a half, which is fairly impressive, all things considered. Don't you think so? And um, I, I quite like the little bit lighter orange here. Here's, this is what we did tonight. I'm just going to just take this one out of the way now and show you this. And I'll zoom in for you. And there's our picture. So I think that was fun. Peonies or Lady and we did it in an hour and a half, which I think is a fairly, fairly tricky. Any final questions before we say good night? Well, you guys, we appreciate you very much, and we always enjoy your comments, the fact that you watch. And I, so, you know, when we post people's artwork on our, our gallery, that uh, on Pinterest, uh, our student gallery on Pinterest, everyone's so supportive of the other artists and encouraging. And I think that's one of the nicest things about this group of artists that paint with us and is that you guys are all such lovely people. And you're just, it, I really appreciate the fact how you support everyone that's trying to paint because it's a journey and it's doable and it's all learnable. Good night.